welcome to the Changing Rhythms podcast. Thank you for joining us. We're your hosts. I'm Rebecca. And I'm Bethany. This podcast explores life's changing rhythms. Last time we we walked through the coaching exercise with Bethany, answering some of the questions I like to pose to my clients when helping them to gain insights about their next steps. I hope that you were able to answer some of the questions for yourself as well. And we've gained insights that will help us find our new direction. Now we want to think about it practically. Like what are some of the things that need to be considered? Some of the things that I have been considering um, when making the plan that will propel me into that new direction. So Rebecca, drawing on your experience, um, I know there were times where you planned for a transition and times when you didn't. So when you planned for the transition to a new career, what was your thought process or what were some of the things you took into consideration? When I transitioned to a new career, the different times I've changed jobs, I've considered the impact on my family financially in terms of availability to them and um, the impact on my team at the job that I was leaving and where I would go next. So when the transition was not planned, but happened all of a sudden, the cost I was counting was usually the weight of a very unhealthy situation. So I considered things like mental health and the toll that that job was taking on me, uh, whether I could or should keep on this path. Um, I considered what it would take to exit the situation. And I always thought a lot about whom I might let down and who I or whether I wanted to prioritize my own well-being and that of others like my family. So lots of thought about the impact and um, where I was gonna go in terms of finances, in terms of my time being available to people um, and for myself. But a lot of times when it was a situation where my mental health was on the line and I wasn't doing well, I, it was like I was making a choice to prioritize myself and my well-being, and that usually was how I viewed all, all the aspects of the situation to make that decision. So um, the idea of mental health, like I feel like it's not really given the weight that it should, you know, like I think about if you say that you have a specific illness um, like cancer or diabetes or something that's tangible, I feel like you get more sympathy or empathy or people are willing to work with you or understand why you're making the choices that you make. But then when it comes to mental well-being, well, it, it literally is in your head, right? And so how do you, do you feel like in discussing your reasons for leaving and you gave your mental well-being as your main reason, do you feel like that was received with like the seriousness or um, just with the same degree of respect as like a physical ailment? Or do you feel like people are kind of like, oh, you really could have stuck it out, you know? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it definitely varied from person to person. Um, I didn't, I don't think I actually officially st- said to one job or one you know, company or boss, I'm leaving for mental health reasons. But um, yeah, I didn't always explain why I was leaving. <laughs> Sometimes it was just, I'm getting ready to move on. I'll see you later. And that was all they really needed to know. But there were other people involved in the discussion. So family members, friends, you know, and I think with my family, I had a lot of support when it came to making decisions for mental health in most of those scenarios. Um, However, I think with my family, it was also a situation where they are not used to making decisions for their mental well-being. So Mm -hmm. it was kind of perplexing to them. Like, this job is, you know, stressing you out and contributing to depression and anxiety. 
so what? That's life. It's not like anyone actually said that and dismissed mm-hmm. me, mm-hmm. but that's the, the attitude that we as a family have kind of taken. Like you just buckle down and do the work. Um, so that's one perspective, but then I know with one of the jobs that I left, I had shared with my boss quite a bit about some mental health struggles I was facing. And so she knew that there were things going on, even though I didn't say in the end that this was officially the reason that I'm leaving Mm -hmm. or talk to her about the extent to which that uh, contributed to my decision. But I don't know that I gave anyone the opportunity to say one way or the other whether mental health was a legitimate reason to leave the job. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, and, and I think I was probably thinking more in terms of friends and family, just because I feel like, again, even physical health is touchy to discuss with your employer, but I just feel like, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just where I think we are. Um, a lot of times mental health is definitely off the table to discuss with an employer so and 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 maybe if it wasn't maybe you know things wouldn't go so far you know Mm -hmm. but it's where we are right now yeah and I guess I want to mention too that with the types of jobs that I've held some of them have been in retail some of them have been in child care um some of them have been in a corporate environment. And I just want to point out that there are different levels of privilege in each of those settings, right? Like in a retail situation, I felt like, you know, there was less room to be concerned with my mental health. Mm -hmm. Like, um, because there weren't even any health benefits in that job. So uh, it's not like, my employer was able to give me a sick day or a mental health day to take off. It was hourly and it was, you either come and get paid or you don't come and don't get paid. Um, So there's just a lot less flexibility to have that discussion with your employer for sure, but also with your family and friends about the situation. Cause in that job, I was there because I had to be there. I was there because I had to make some money. Um, Whereas I feel like in the corporate setting, it was, it felt like there was more implied freedom. Like I could go and get another job like this one um, Mm -hmm. because of the same credentials that gave me this job, this opportunity, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just want to acknowledge that um, I don't think that we all have the same degree of freedom to consider our mental health as we count the cost. Mm -hmm. Um, because of our situations, whether that be uh, just your current job or your education or, um, well, there are so many things, but do you see what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So kind of um, along those lines, and you've kind of touched on it already, but um, what are some things you've learned in hindsight? So like now we can look at it and see like um, that there are degrees of privilege in terms of self-care and just moving from one position to another. But what were some other things that you learned or some things that you didn't initially consider, but once you were in the new position, you wish you had realized or considered? Yeah. In hindsight, I learned that I should have left sooner every single time. And I've learned that I have been more concerned with avoiding being part of anyone's hardship than I was concerned with my own well-being. I never wanted to inconvenience anyone. I went to great lengths to take care of people when it was not my responsibility and I could not actually protect them from the very things I'd hoped to protect them from, but I tried. Um, and in new positions, I realized that I could have considered my own well being and stood up for myself uh, better. So each time I learn that same lesson in different ways to different degrees, mm-hmm. um, 
but I really feel that it's important because just like, I mean, especially when I say that I, I should have left sooner every time. If I had left sooner, I think that there were certain fears that I had, like, well, then where am I going to work? How am I going to make ends meet? And in my experience since then, I feel like I would have been able to find another job. I would have been able to um, find a new opportunity, but I just, I didn't have that sense of hope at the time so Mm -hmm. it's not to judge my past self too harshly Mm -hmm. but that was just something that I had to learn by experience Mm -hmm. it's not necessarily worth staying in a situation that feels like it's killing me slowly it's not necessarily worth it just because I don't know what's going to happen next so takes faith I guess right oh definitely I agree and and it kind of sounds like one of the things that you have to consider um, is is comfort, right? Mm-hmm. The comfort of um, what we know and are familiar with and are comfortable with um, impacting others with versus um, the unknown but potential improvement, right? The comfort of staying versus the comfort of leaving. So when you really when you really weigh the two, depending upon each person, you can arrive at a different conclusion, right? Because Mm -hmm. looking at the same comforts, one person might decide to stay, you know, when they look at all of the things, the benefits of staying versus leaving. And so they might decide to leave. And another person with the exact same conditions would view those conditions differently and feel like those are all reasons to leave you know, right. So it's, it's definitely a personal decision. Um, I think for me, the comfort of staying was really turning into complacency, Hmm. you know, and, and just, it was no longer tenable for me. Um, The comfort of leaving is the, is the excitement of starting something new, the idea of trusting God, the idea of being more fulfilled. And so when I weigh you know, what I'm used to, what I know, what I'm good at, what I'm comfortable with against um, what's unfamiliar, but potentially so much more rewarding. I feel like I'm going to go with the comfort of feeling more rewarded in the long run. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so for me, it was really a matter of even, even, I guess, even all things being equal, right? Having a stable paycheck, being familiar with my job and my routine. um, Those things are still true today, but I don't need them, right? Mm -hmm. Because before I needed them because I needed stability for my son and I I needed to make sure that I could take care of him. Well, he's not at home anymore. And so I feel like I can take more risks and not have to worry about the consequences of stepping out in faith or taking a risk. Right. Um, So what about you? Like, did you find that your situation didn't change or, or the, I guess the components of your situation didn't necessarily change, but how you viewed them changed over time and how they were serving you. Do you feel like they changed over time? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it, it definitely depends on the stage of life. Um, like you mentioned, having to support your son versus having less, less obligation to support him as he moves out of the house and everything. Um, for me, it's been being single on my own, getting married uh, with no children, Um, eventually having a child, like all these different stages, uh, the obligations I feel like I had to meet were paying off student loans because I went to school and had to take loans to pay for it. Um, So, you know, being able to stay employed so that I can make payments and, and not be in debt for the rest of my life, hopefully, that's the kind of obligation that I was looking at, but it definitely 
all these all these criteria for making those moves from job to job like you were just describing change as life change but it seemed like it's a process of coming to the end of comfort in each of those scenarios so when you get to the point that you know you can't do this anymore um you something's got to give right uh I'm a pretty decisive person. So once I know, I tend to act on it. I think that's why I could leave that one job with no prospects. And I generally try to live with no regrets. So I I don't want to spend extra time or waste time once I have come to a determination. Um, So like when I learned that I was having a reaction to certain foods, that's something that comes up a lot. as a wellness coach, I talk with clients about my experience. I had to make a decision to stop eating those foods. I couldn't continue eating them because it was contributing to harming my health. And I understand that everyone's different in making their decision and in their process to coming to that point where they know they have to make a change. I know a lot of people who have known food reactions and they continue to eat those foods because they'd just rather eat the foods. Um, So let's think about this practically when it comes to jobs and changing jobs. Once you've come to the point where you know that you have to make a change, what are some of the steps you need to take to ensure that you can still sustain yourself? So are we saying like, what what are some of the practical things we need to consider? Yeah, practical, like, you know, to make ends meet, to, to pay bills and, and stay insured or whatever the situation may be, but also for your mental health, like we've been talking about, um, because it, it could be a long process to come to a point where you decide, I'm going to step into this discomfort of job insecurity so that I can get out of this situation that I know is doing me harm. But mm-hmm. then what are the, the practical steps you need to take to make sure you're covered in various ways? All right. Well, I think definitely you need to look into what resources are available to you, um, especially if, you, if, if making a change is not going to take you from one definite um, paycheck to another definite paycheck, or it may not take you to the same level of pay that you had, or Mm -hmm. at least not right away. So I think you need to look at things like, do I have um, a source of food assistance? Do I have a source of rental assistance, assistance with utilities? Um, Do I know of temporary employment opportunities? Um, Would I qualify for unemployment? Do I know how to get access to those? Am I, am I, um, budgeting, you know, what I do have or what I do foresee coming in. Am I good at budgeting that money because, or even that time, not just money, but also time. Um, those are all things that are going to help. I think the transition, if you know that you have these kind of safety nets in place, or at least where to go, if you need them, I think that probably um, makes it easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, once you've looked at the comfort of staying versus the comfort of leaving, and you've looked into some of the resources that are available to you, um, should you decide to leave, I think there's one final pe- one final <laughs> piece of determination, which you've already talked about, but I think we just need to state it explicitly again, which is peace of mind Mm -hmm. and what would give you the greatest peace of mind. You know, would you truly have peace if you stayed or would you every day be thinking, why am I still here? I don't want to be doing this. You know, what else can I do? Or would you truly have peace of mind if you moved on? And for each person, that answer is going to be different and only they can answer that. I know for me, um, leaving the, the comfort of my present position would bring me the greatest peace of mind. 
um, just because I don't want to go to work every day wishing I was somewhere else, right. else you know, um, and because I know that what I do has a great impact on others, if I'm constantly um, unfulfilled or if I'm constantly wanting to be somewhere else, then my mind is not fully present in the moment with my students. And I just have to be honest about that. And they deserve to have someone who is fully present with them all of the time, you know? Mm -hmm. And so for me, that was just, this is it. I need to move on. Um, but I know everybody's not ready to make that determination. You know, everybody's not ready either because they haven't counted the cost or they're not truly sure what would bring them the greatest peace, right? Um, so in order to help you do that, um, let's take a step back and just ask a question. How would you outline or how would you define your comforts? If you had to make a list, what would you list as the comforts of staying in your current position? Hmm. And then what would you list as the comforts of leaving your current position? You know, because I think to me, when I write something down, I'm processing it more. I'm thinking about it more. Um, I'm evaluating it more. And so it just, I don't know, it, I, I get more out of it than just thinking about it. So actually writing it down actually helps me and looking at it in black and white or blue and white or whatever color ink you mm -hmm. want to use. Um, but it just, it makes me really process what I'm trying to do or the decision I'm trying to make. So once you've made your list, which do you find yourself leaning more toward? Not which one is more expected or more acceptable, but just when you look at it, which one stands out? Stay or leave? You know, um, for me, some of my comforts were stability, insurance, familiarity, fulfillment, um, or versus fulfillment, trusting God, and excitement. And when I looked at both sides, knowing the potential for fulfillment, the potential to, to see God work, because it's one thing to say that you trust him, but actually giving him the space to show you that you can trust him and allowing him to move in different situations. Um, to me, that that's greater than staying where I am, you know, and even now I'm seeing not that I've gotten lots and lots of calls, but I'm seeing movement. I'm seeing potential. I'm seeing um, some positive feedback from my resume being out there. And, and I feel like that's, um, that's just God going, just trust me. Just, yeah. just trust me. It may not, you know, you may not get that one call within a week, but just trust that this is where I'm leading you, you mm -hmm. know? And so being able to trust where he's leading versus staying in what seems to be comfortable or it, it's, it's meeting physical needs, but it's definitely not meeting emotional, mental, or spiritual needs, you know? Right. And so when I look at those, it's like, no, it's, it's, it's definitely time to go. Mm -hmm. So if you, I mean, you've already done this, Rebecca, but um, can you think of one, or even if you wanted to do the one before you um, became a coach, you know, what were your comforts that you had to evaluate the staying versus leaving? Yeah, so my comforts as I've changed jobs have primarily focused on a sense of satisfaction with myself and my integrity. So I always wanted to be able to look back and know that I made the wisest decision that I could and that I wasn't distracted by things of lesser importance in terms of what I value. So I wanted to be able to look back and say, yes, that was with what I knew at the time, 
with everything that I had available to me, that was the best decision I could have made. And therefore I don't regret it. Um, but I definitely think in my last position before becoming a coach, it was a sense that I needed to stick out the job until I finished what I came to do. And um, yeah, I think I did that, even though I, I did leave abruptly and earlier than I expected to, I do feel that I completed the project in terms of what I had committed myself to do. And I can live with that, <laughs> you know? Um, I think a lot of times when God does lead us to a new role, which that role I went into coming out of a different one that felt like um, was taking a major toll on mental health and things like that. But when I stepped into my last role before becoming a coach, I, I had a sense that God was leading me there. But what I've learned and I learn over and over again is that when God is leading me someplace, I don't know what it's going to look like. Like God doesn't necessarily say go this way. Um, and I promise you're going to love it. It's going to be the perfect fit. It's going to be everything you ever wanted. You know, he rarely gives us that because then we wouldn't depend on him. And, and this world isn't set up to be entirely satisfying to us. Right. So it's this recurring thing that I've seen in each of these transition situations that I am praying for God's leadership. I'm following what I believe to be what he's telling me to do. And it never looks the way that I expected because God says, go from point A to point B. And I fill in all the gaps with my mind. Like, okay, so that means it's going to be this way and this way and this way. And then I get into it and I learn, oh, it's nothing like what I thought. But that doesn't mean that I fail to hear God, or that doesn't mean that God hasn't led me here or that he's not here with me in it. So I'm just pointing that out to say that a, a big part of my comfort as I've changed jobs has been about a sense of satisfaction with my decisions and my integrity, but also that's closely tied with feeling confident that I've followed God where he led me mm -hmm. and acknowledging that I didn't know what it was going to be like. And I didn't know how long he intended me to be there. Mm -hmm. So with my last position, I thought maybe I'll be here for years and years and years. And then when I abruptly came to a point of uh, leaving after having suffered a miscarriage and feeling like I can't sustain this role anymore, then I, I was learning, okay, so this is the end that God had in mind for this role. It wasn't what I thought it would be 10 years down the road or whatever. And um, I, I was able to leave then knowing that I had finished what I started in a different way than I expected. And it looked totally differently from what I expected, but um, that's my comfort. And I could take that with me to another role. And, and I think that's, that's something that I'm learning, you know, in, in this process. And of course, I feel like God has his plan for his reason. Right. And, you know, he is going to bring us to his expected end, not what we necessarily expect, but definitely the plan that he has. And I'm just in this process, I'm really learning that you can't mess it up right? Like I'm, I'm always so worried about, oh, I'm going to miss God. Oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make the wrong choice. You know, you do have to be practical. You do um, have to really consider, you know, can I just walk out of this job today? Or, you know, do I have to stick it out for another month or two, or, you know, depending upon how the Lord is leading you, but knowing that ultimately if you are seeking to do his will, even if you don't make the quote unquote right decision at the time, he's still going to bring you back to where he wants you to be and the lesson he wants you to learn. And mm -hmm. so that's, that's what this is teaching me. Um, because I think I probably should have left, you know, when you, the same way you said, 
each time you should have left sooner. I, yeah. I feel like I probably should have left sooner, but I'm still, even though maybe I could have been at this point earlier, I'm still where I need to be learning the lessons that I need to learn now, mm-hmm. you know? And so, yeah, I, maybe I wouldn't have the level of stress or displeasure or whatever, you know, but either way, I'm still leaving. Yeah. You know, because he's calling me to something else. Yeah. So just, you know, you can take comfort or I take comfort in truly knowing now I can't mess it up. Mm -hmm. You know, I might not go a straight line, but as long as I'm truly trying to follow after his plan, he's going to bring me around to where he wants me to be and learn what he wants me to learn. And so I think that's also a reason why um, I'm more willing to take that step. It's like, I can't mess it up. Yeah. Yeah. Things can go wrong most definitely, but in the grand scheme of things, I can't mess it up. Right. Right. I absolutely agree. And I think those are lessons we'll continue to learn as we pursue different careers over the next several years. Um, So we're going to wrap it up here and uh, I just invite you listeners to go ahead and answer those questions for yourself. The questions that we've explored today. And um, just to remind you, one of the things that we talked about, let's see, uh, I'm going to have to revisit what you said, Bethany. Comfort. Comfort. Yes. And how would you outline your comforts? That's what you asked us. You said, if we, if you had to make a list, what would you list as your comforts of staying in your current position? And what would you list as the comforts of leaving your current position? And then after you've made your list, which do you find yourself leaning more towards? So those are some questions to consider and you can email us your answers to changing rhythms podcast at gmail.com and uh, leave your response there or in the YouTube comments. And remember to check out the full list of resources in the YouTube description box, because like we talked about earlier, we want to make sure that you're able to count the cost and know where your healthcare and food and rent and transportation and all those things are going to come from. So we've gathered some resources and left them there in the YouTube description box for you to click on and explore if you're figuring this out for yourself. Then next time we'll discuss identifying some barriers to change and what we can do to overcome them. So continue thinking about your own next steps and send us any questions or concerns that you have and we'll respond to you in the next episode. We look forward to exploring more with you. So keep listening and stay healthy and safe until then.